When it comes to getting people to click on your Wattpad story, there are a few factors that are more important than your blurb. Hey Fresties, welcome back to Wattpad Wednesdays. Today we are talking all about blurbs. Now, if you watched the series I just did that took you through every single step of my process for writing a Wattpad book, you know that I felt like I left out this big important step, which is writing blurbs. So while I am gonna have some general tips in here, for the most part, this video is going to be sharing my process about how I write blurbs for my stories. Also, when I was writing the uh, sheet for this video to like have notes for myself, I kept writing blub instead of blurb. I did it like five times. I wrote blub. But without further ado, let's just get into it and talk about the first step when writing a blurb, which is less of a step and more of a decision that you need to choose how long you want your blurb to be. Some people gravitate towards more of a classic blurb style, like the type that you would see on the back of a book jacket in a store or a library, and other people like to go more short and sweet and take advantage of the creativity that Wattpad allows and play around with a variety of different styles. Some shorter blurb examples would be like a quote or maybe a song lyric. Some people even use just the definition of a word, like if your title of your book is one word like uh, spontaneous or something, then then your blurb could just be the definition of spontaneous. Another example that you've probably seen if you are on Wattpad is the type of blurb that goes in which blank happens to blank or in which blank meets blank and they blank, you know, that sort of thing. In which a girl goes on a road trip and meets the guy of her dreams bad example, but if you do go with one of these shorter blurbs, what a lot of people will do is just keep the short one in the regular description box, but then on the inside of the book in the first chapter, they will add a longer description that is more like a typical book blurb. I would say this is a very personal choice and I haven't really noticed views swinging one way or the other for a specific type of blurb. I've seen short blurbs that have millions of reads and I've seen very typical blurbs that have millions of reads. So honestly, I think it's just a matter of personal preference and what you think goes with the vibe of your story. What I will say though is that I think that short blurbs, because they are so short, can garner curiosity and therefore a click, but at the same time, due to the lack of info, a reader might just pass it by and not bother clicking on it because they don't really know that much about the story at first glance. This is why, personally, I always choose to go with a longer, more typical blurb style, but I actually do sort of use both methods because I put a short hook at the beginning of my blurb and separate it from the longer section of my blurb and this shorter portion is basically just a very brief telling of the external plot. As I go through these choices I will be giving examples from my own book Hearts Like Ours to demonstrate how I actually put these into action and really solidify what I mean and am trying to say. So I will put up a picture of my blurb right here and go ahead and read the little section that I'm talking about, which is again focusing purely almost on the external plot. All Layla Foster wants is to launch her own branch off of her parents' fitness company. But how is she supposed to focus on making her one shot a success when her client's brother makes her feel things she swore off a long time ago? So as you can see, we're getting to the romance aspect and we are also touching a bit on this character's flaw that makes her want to avoid the romance in the first place. As you probably noticed in the picture, I separate this little portion from the bulkier part of the description with a row of asterisks. You could really use any sort of divider here. You could probably get fancy with it and go on websites that have cool symbols and stuff like that. I just gravitate towards the asterisks because it is what you see in the paid stories on Wattpad. So I know that Wattpad likes it. I know that readers are familiar with it. And I know that it's going to make my book look like the most approved stories on the platform. So the longer part of the description is where I go much deeper into the external plot and give a little bit more away. Obviously, not going into any spoilers or anything. We wouldn't want to give too much away lest we take away all the intrigue for our potential readers. I'm also going to touch just a little bit on the internal conflict for any of my main characters. I 
don't go very in depth for describing the internal conflict in the blurb because as far as books go, while the internal conflict and the growth of your characters is probably the most important part of the story and is the actual lesson of the story, it's not really the selling point. Obviously, we know that to have a good story, you have to have a very meaningful internal plot, but to have an entertaining story, you have to have a very intriguing external plot, which is, in my experience, the thing that is going to get readers to actually want to click on your story and check it out. So I will go ahead and read the longer portion of my description now, and you can see how I touch on both of the issues for both main characters and how I'm focusing more on the external issues. Layla Foster has learned that people like her for one thing, her career. Being the heiress to Foster Fitness, her parents' multi-million celebrity-filled gym chain has led to nothing but fake friends, gold-digging boyfriends, and a lifetime of doing exactly what her parents want. She's ready to start something of her own, a new branch of the company that focuses on whipping brides and grooms into shape before their big day. But being on site at McCaden Orchard, the beautiful sprawling home of her first clients, is going to be hard thanks to the bride's brother Dawson. He's outspoken, nosy, opinionated, and more handsome than any movie star Layla's ever trained. Dawson McCaden doesn't do love. He was scorned once, and once was enough to have him trade in commitment for one night stands. So why does it bother him so much that his sister's new trainer has given up on love too? He's not looking for just one passion at night with the feisty redheaded beauty, but is he ready to risk his heart again to go after the relationship he can't stop himself from wanting? So you can see where I touched on a little bit of the internal wounds, which are, you know, Layla's fake friends, gold digging boyfriends, a lifetime of doing exactly what her parents want. All those three are obviously internal issues that need to be worked out, but the entire focus of the rest of the paragraph is all external. And in Dawson's paragraph, though it's shorter, it's very much the same thing. His internal wound is revealed, he was scorned once, and he's not putting himself out there again to risk it happening another time. But the rest of the focus is external, and it touches on his internal in Layla and why it frustrates him. I end my blurbs by putting either my update schedule if the story is ongoing, like for Hearts Like Ours, I wrote that it updates almost every Saturday, and if the story has already been completed, then I put that it's been completed, and I like to just add also the date that it was completed, just as a little memory, and if the story has undergone edits, then I also go ahead and add that under and put completed, you know, first edits on this date, or completed major edits on this date. That's more of a personal decision, Obviously, you don't have to do that, but I do like to because if somebody doesn't want to read an ongoing story because they don't know if it's consistent, if they see that you put the update schedule in the description, then they're probably going to think, well, if they go through that trouble to actually put it there and are committed to putting it in there, then they're probably going to have consistent updates. And that could be the difference between gaining a reader or not gaining one. As for marking it completed, obviously there already is that feature built into Wattpad, but when I complete a story, I really like to drill at home that yes this story is completed, you can binge read the whole thing, because completed stories are a big selling point to readers. They love to binge read and they don't want to risk getting invested in something that is going to stop updating and just disappear. To go ahead and give another example of the steps that I take, I'm going to also read the blurb from my other book, How to Save Your School from Soul Stealing Demons, and you can actually see a little difference at the beginning of this one. I put in the description right at the top that it was a Wadi's 2021 horror winner. So I think that is very common throughout Wattpad and very much a selling point, again, to put any accomplishments that it has, especially if they are you know, official Wattpad accomplishments, like if it wins a competition, if you put that right at the top of the description. There's no way anybody can miss it. And, you know, some validation comes with that, that this is a good story and there is a very large chance that they are going to enjoy it. So if you have something to brag about, go ahead and put it at the beginning, but do try to keep it short. You know, you don't want this huge chunk of text before the actual description comes into play. So you can see again here the shorter section of the blurb. Diego's life has spiraled since the gruesome death of his brother Miguel, and moving to a new town right before his senior year definitely wasn't on his to-do list. Oh yeah, and neither was saving the world from a centuries-old undead spirit who's turned Diego's new high school into its own personal buffet. So you really get to the core of the external conflict really fast with just a little sprinkle of internal conflict. So then we get into the longer part of the description. Diego Rivera killed his older brother. At least that's how he sees it, since it was his behind the wheel blackout that cost Miguel's life. He's been a shell of his old self since, unable to shake the mental toll of that traumatic day. 
As if nightmares, spontaneous barfing, and disfigurement weren't enough to deal with, now there's a serial killer going around and offing his peers. Great. He'd rather not think about the brutal killings any more than he has to, but his new friend Watts notices something he can't ignore. A pattern that suggests Vanterbest High's most popular students are involved in the murders. And not only that, but he thinks they're the newest members of an ancient demon-worshipping cult. So, you know, normal high school stuff. Reluctantly, Diego lets Watts drag him into his outrageous theories, paranoid research, and the recruitment of two intimidating outcasts. But a bunch of jocks and cheerleaders can't really be behind the terror plaguing their small town, right? Well, yes and no. The truth is, things are about to get complicated. And bloody. Really, really bloody. So you can see with the mention of Diego's belief that he killed his older brother, bam, that's the internal conflict revealed right there. And then the entirety of the rest of the description is focusing on the external plot of the crazy stuff that is going on at this high school with demons and cults and death, etc. And in filming this video, I have realized that I have not added my little completed with the date thing at the end of this blurb. So I'm gonna go do that when I finish filming. Now, if you look on my profile, you will see other types of blurbs that I have used in the past, you know, shorter ones, ones that are not divided into these two sections, but you will see a pretty consistent pattern of me focusing on the external plot and just throwing in little bits of the internal conflict. It's my main goal to hook a reader in and get them to click on the story because they want to be entertained. So right up front, I throw all the most entertaining parts at them and let them know, here's what's in this story, here's what you're gonna get, here's all the stuff that you might click on the story for. Obviously, again, not getting into any spoilers. You want them to be interested, but not overwhelmed by information. I think I've said this before, but sometimes you watch a movie trailer and you're like, Dude, it feels like I just watched the whole movie. Like, I feel like there's nothing left for me to discover if I watch that movie. You don't want that. You don't want your blurb to be a movie trailer that has way too much information in it. You want your blurb to be like a movie trailer that has just enough to get the viewer interested and feeling like there are still mysteries to be discovered. Whether that's how do those two characters really end up together or do they end up together at all? Or who is the killer? Or what is the killer's motive? Questions need to be left to be answered. So those are my best tips and my personal steps for writing blurbs. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, feel free to leave a like and feel free to subscribe for many more videos about Wattpad and writing. And let me know in the comments what your preferred style of blurb is, whether that's for your own books or if you're a reader and you're looking for another book to read. Now, I'm always curious about the general opinions of Wattpad users. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you in the next video.